Hello students and welcome to chapter number 8. This chapter is titled Planning and Goal Setting. This is a major function of managers. If you remember the four functions of managers, the first one was planning. So planning, organizing, leading and controlling. So planning was at the top of the list. So this is why an entire chapter is dedicated to solely discussing the function of planning. So in this chapter we will be discussing what planning is, what does it consist of, some of the challenges in planning, and some of the new trends and approaches to this function. As always, we begin with a formal definition of our concept. So planning is a management function that involves setting goals, establishing strategies for achieving those goals, and then developing plans to integrate and coordinate work activities. So let's break it down a little. So it involves goal setting. So the first thing that should click in your mind whenever you hear the word planning is setting goals. So when you set a plan, basically you are determining your goals. What do you want to achieve? When you set a plan for graduation, what do you want to achieve after graduation? When you set a plan for just going out for lunch, what exactly do you want to achieve uh, you know, by going out to lunch? Is it just having fun? Is it nourishing your body? Is it something else? Okay, and then uh, establishing strategies. So not only do you set goals, but you should also think about and discuss how you are going to achieve those goals. How exactly are you going to attain those objectives of yours? So my goal is to graduate in 2019. Okay, so this is my goal. Now, how am I going to achieve that? By working hard, by, you know, studying, by making sure that I never miss lectures and so on. So these are your strategies for achieving those goals. And then finally, developing plans to integrate and coordinate work activities. So basically here you are trying to see how am I going to combine, how am I going to combine different, you know, activities, different, um, elements so that they can work together towards achieving my objective. So the first thing that should come to your mind whenever you hear the word planning is setting goals. And then how are you going to achieve those goals? And finally, exactly how are you going to come up with a step-by-step -step process in order to complete that plan of yours? So a, a distinction of formal planning is that it is specific and time oriented. So we always come up with plans, but these are informal plans. So we have a plan to go out for lunch after this lecture. We have a plan to go to Bahrain in the weekend, but these are just informal plans. Formal planning involves specific and timely framed goals. And then these goals should also be written down and communicated and shared to relevant uh, parties. So it's not only about setting goals, it's about setting specific goals. Goals that have a time limit. When are you going to achieve that goal? Exactly at what date? And then they must be written down. They must be in writing. And they also have to be shared and communicated to the people who are going to contribute to achieving them. So let us talk a little about why do managers plan. So why is planning important? This question could be asked differently. Why is planning important for managers or in organizations? Planning provides direction. It tells you where are you headed as an organization as a person, as a manager, as an employee. So it tells you basically where are you headed? Where are you going? So direction. Then it reduces uncertainty. Remember in, in a previous chapter we talked about organizational uncertainty. When something is uncertain, it means that you are not sure about it. That it is ambiguous. It is not clear. You um, you know, make a decision and you just hope for the best. You cannot say that I am 100% confident, 100% certain that this is the outcome. This is what the outcome is going to be. No. 
So, by planning, by coming up with a good plan, we are trying to reduce, decrease uncertainty. We are trying to make sure that things are less ambiguous. And then it minimizes waste and redundancy. So redundancy is basically repetition. So when things are repeated. So instead of wasting our time, our energy, energy, our resources, our budgets, doing the same thing over and over again, by coming up with a good plan, managers can contribute to reducing, minimizing waste, when minimizing the time that is lost, minimizing the money that is lost, and, you know, investing our efforts towards something that is more important. And finally, uh, planning establishes the goals and standards for controlling. Let's go back to the four managerial functions. So planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So how would you control, how would you monitor, how would you evaluate and assess if you do not have standards? And if you cannot come up with standards and, and criteria for evaluation without a formal plan, without goals. You have to set goals and then you can evaluate yourself and your success against those goals. In the beginning, you have to set goals. If you have a good goal, you can see if you have a good goal or not. How do you set goals? In the beginning. So at the very beginning, we start with planning. Because in planning, we set goals. Now that we have uh, we have goals, now we can say that we can monitor and we can control. So continuing on this note, the importance of planning, this slide explains the relationship and the link between planning and performance. So let's find out if there is a relationship and what kind of relationship is it. So the first Note says that formal planning is associated with positive financial results. Basically, the better the plan, the better the formal plan, the more positive your results are going to be financially. كل ما كانت الخطة أفضل كل ما كانت نتائجك المالية أفضل كشركة أو كوحدة أو كإدارة. So basically, this says that you must be uh, setting good plans. If you want positive financial results, you want to make better profits, you want to make less losses, then you have to have a good formal plan. Then the second note says quality of planning or implementation is, is more important than the extent of it. So the quality of the plan. So we always have this argument, quality versus quantity, right? So in here, this is really evident that quality is definitely more important than the time frame, than the extent of the plan. It doesn't matter if you set a plan for 10 years, it matters what's in that plan, how you are going to monitor that plan, what kind of goals have you determined, how are you going to exactly you know, involve different parties and coordinate different activities in order to achieve that plan. And number three, external factors can reduce the impact of planning on performance. External factors. So even though we have been saying that planning definitely improves performance, still sometimes there are things outside of your control, things external to you, things you have no control of, and they will definitely impact uh, uh, performance, regardless of how good your plan is, because some things just happen without any anticipation. So sometimes these things happen. And finally, the relationship between planning and performance seems to be influenced by the planning time frame. So, the planning time frame. So, how much time did you spend on planning? Okay, this is why this is, you know, this is not a, an activity that should be taken lightly. Invest in it. Spend time on planning. 
So you have to take your time when it comes to setting or devising plans. Make sure that you spend enough time, spend enough efforts, um, you know, put enough thought into it so that you can ensure that the outcome of this plan is better performance. So we have been saying that the first thing that should come to your mind when you hear the word plan or planning is goals, setting goals, goal setting. And here we have two different terms, goals and objectives. In this textbook, they are used interchangeably. In some other textbooks, in some other courses, maybe they might have, you know, they might have a slight differentiation between the two. However, for the purpose of this particular chapter, we are also going to use these two terms interchangeably. So whenever I say the word goal, I mean objective, and whenever I say the word objective, I also mean goal. ممكن بعض الناس يفرقون بين معنى goal ومعنى objective لكن في مادتنا هنا وفي الشابتر هنا راح نستخدمهم بنفس المعنى What are goals? What are those objectives? These are your desired outcomes or targets So what do you want to achieve? What do you want to achieve? These are your goals and objectives. What I, my goal is to graduate in 2019. My goal is to get a job. My goal is to get a better salary. My goal is to get married and have kids. Okay, so those are your objectives or your goals. So then what are plans? Plans are basically they document the... Uh, it's like they document those goals and how you're going to achieve them. So basically, it's an outline of how, what are your goals and how are you going to achieve them. Your strategies for achieving those goals. So we have so many types of goals in organizations. It depends on the type of goal. Uh, based on the type of goal we have, we can determine the plan. So in organizations, we have financial goals, goals that are related to profits, to losses, to revenues, to prices, and so on. And then we have also strategic goals, so goals that are related to strategy. So whenever you hear the word strategy, guys, I want you to think about a number of things. First of all, strategy is more on a higher level, okay? So who decides on strategies? More people in top management than in, you know, first line management. So strategy is more about higher level. That's number one. The second thing that I, I, that I want you to think of when you hear the word strategy is that strategy is about the entire organization. It's not about just one department. It can be comprehensive enough to be applied throughout the entire company or the entire organization okay and then number three strategy is about how okay it's about the way you are going to achieve your goal so my goal is that I want to have more customers for my shop this is my goal okay so my strategy how am I going to achieve that goal now the you know top management decided, for example, that in order for us to, to have more customers, we are going to go to universities, we are going to come to places like JUC, where we have so many people, and, you know, give them some special offers and discounts, so that they can come to our shop and be our customers, okay? Now, stated goals versus real goals. So stated comes from the word statement, okay? What is a statement? Is the official thing, the official word, the official message that the organization is sending about its goals. So you will find this in the company's website. You will find this in the company's official documents. They would claim on, on their social media, for example, that these are our goals. إحنا شركة سابق ونطمح إنه إحنا نحقق الأهداف التالية واحد اثنين ثلاثة هذه الأهداف الرسمية المكتوبة المعلنة stated goals but real goals are those things that are not necessarily written 
but you can um, you can infer them from the actions of the members of the organization. So they are not saying this, but from the way they are acting, from the way its top management is behaving and acting, you can, you know, come up with uh, uh, with with how exactly uh, are they moving towards achieving their goals. Uh, stated here, المعلنة المكتوبة, real goals هي اللي الغير المكتوبة هي من من التصرفاتهم ومن طريقة عملهم تقدر تستنتج هذه الأهداف يعني يقولون أو يدعون إنه كاتبين على موقعهم إنه إحنا من أهدافنا توفير أفضل بيئة عمل في المملكة العربية السعودية هذا الهدف المعلن المكتوب stated goal لكن في الحقيقة لما تجي تشوفهم ما هم قاعدين يعني يشتغلون على هذا الهدف على الإطلاق قاعدين بالعكس ينفرون الناس قاعدين يسو يعني يسوون أشياء تخلي الناس تستقيل أكثر So in reality this is not what is happening So there is a discrepancy between their stated goals and their real goals So this nice looking graph summarizes all the types of plans Okay So Plans differ in terms of a number of elements, in terms of breadth. So we have strategic and then we have operational. So what do we mean by breadth? So what exactly does it cover? Okay, When it's more comprehensive and covers the entire organization, it's a strategic plan. When it focuses on a specific unit, a specific function, a specific department, okay, it's more operational. Then also, plans are different in terms of their time frame. So they can be long-term plans or they can be short-term plans. And they also are different in terms of specificity. It comes from the word specific. Okay. So, are they more general? If they are general, it means they are just directional plans. So it just pushes you towards the right direction. Where are you supposed to be headed and going? But if they are more specific, they, they, like, let's consider these two scenarios, okay? Look at these two different statements. شوف الفرق بين هذه الجملتين. الجملة الأولى, we want to improve our profits. We want to improve our financial performance. Okay, so that's sentence number one. عامة جدا نبغى نحسن أداءنا المالي في الشركة. Sentence number two, we want to increase our sales by 10% at the end of 2019. So this is very, very specific. So plans can be different in terms of specificity. How specific are they? If they are a bit more general, then this is directional. If they have very specific elements, then they are specific plans. And then plans are also different in terms of the frequency of their use. So how often are they used? If they are used only once, so this is called a single-use plan. So this is a single-use plan. And there are also standing plans. Standing means they are always there because this is an event that is, you know, repeated, that happens every now and then. So we have... A standing plan, خطط قائمة, خطط دائمة, in response to these situations. So this is a nice looking graph that summarizes all the coming slides. Okay, so these are the things that we just explained in the graph. So strategic versus operational. We have just mentioned that strategic plans are more about higher level. They apply to the entire organization. Okay, they set up you know, the direction of the entire company. But operational plans, they focus on a specific operation. They focus on a specific unit, on a specific function. Okay? هذا اللي يسموها باللغة العربية الخطط التشغيلية. Operational plans. تشغيلية. Okay? وهناك الخطط الاستراتيجية. Strategic plans. So, when we talk about operational plans, so... Now, this is very specific. It focuses on a specific area. So this area, for example, can focus on sales. Okay, we want to improve sales. 
So this is an operational plan. A strategic plan, however, is you know something a bit more higher level, something that ap applies to the entire company. We want to improve the performance of the entire company. Okay, so strategic versus operational. Now, long term versus short term. There are so many arguments about you know the time frame. So what constitutes what constitutes long term and what constitutes short term in our textbook they say that anything that is longer than three years this is long term and anything that is one year or less this is short term okay long term short term Now specific versus directional, Zaymagunna specific have clear uh, 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 goals. They have uh, they leave no room for interpretation. They tell you exactly what needs to be done. But when it comes to directional plans, they're a bit more general, a bit more like guidelines. Okay, not like very specific. Uh, and don't tell you things like, you know, um, they can be up for interpretation, basically. So n you will have more than one person maybe disagreeing on this. But when it comes to specific plans, they tell you exactly what needs to be done by how much, for example, you need to improve revenues, how many people you need to hire, things like this. Okay. And now single use versus standing. So single use from the name itself, this is self-explanatory. So it's a one-time plan. Okay? It is designed for a unique situation, something that never happened before, something that not only ne never happened before, but will never happen probably again. So this is why we use it only one time. But standing plans are ongoing. Okay? They give you guidance for things that you perform uh, uh, repeatedly. On a regular basis, for example. Okay? For example, in JUC, every semester we have newcomers. Every semester we have people who come from prep here. So we have to have a standing plan about how are we going to receive those students. Okay? Now, approaches to goal setting. So, since the beginning of the lecture, we have talked about goals, we have talked about plans. So, let's talk a little about how those goals are set in organizations. So, the first approach, the first style of setting goals is the traditional way. So, it basically uh, involves top managers setting goal, and then these goals flowing down and cascading down through the entire organization and becoming sub-goals for each organizational area. Mudara al-kubar, top managers, يحطون ويضعون الأهداف وتنزل هذه الأهداف على القسم اللي تحت والقسم اللي تحت ينزلها على اللي تحت واللي تحت واللي تحت إلى أن توصل للموظفين الصغار. Okay? يحطون أهداف العامة الأهداف الكبيرة ونزلوها على اللي تحتهم واللي تحتهم يوزعوها على الأقسام القسم المالية أنت مفروض تسوي كذا قسم الإتشار مفروض تسوي كذا قسم المبيعات تسوي كذا okay so this is the traditional way the traditional goal setting style basically top managers set the goals and then these goals just cascade and trickle down through the entire organization Now, this slide explains a problem with this style. Why sometimes this is a problem? It's because there is no good communication between or across these levels. Okay? So, top managers, they set the goal. And the goal is very general like this. We need to improve the company's performance. Then, the people below them, okay, like middle managers, they would say, in my division, I want to see a good improvement. Top managers يجي يقول لك CEO رئيس الشركة أبغى الشركة تصير أحسن عام جدا صح طيب 
المدير العام ميدل مانجر يقول لك ابغى القسم حقي يصير احسن بعدين مدير الاداره يلا يا شباب ابغاكم تشتغلون بسرعه وتخلصون الامور يعني بشكل افضل الى ان توصل للموظفين الصغار ويقول لك it doesn't matter you know you don't have to care about quality just finish the work faster we have goals that we need to achieve للاسف هذه معضله ومشكله تمر فيها كل الشركات تخطيط لما يكون بالطريقه هذه يصير اثره عكسي وليس ايجابي اوكي okay? so this is a problem with traditional goal setting when there is no good communication across these levels and for top managers they don't care about the quality of work as long as we see an improvement in numbers then we are fine then we have done our our job in a very good way actually this is what they think and this is definitely a problem and here we have two other ways two other styles two other approaches to goal setting means ends chain and mbo or management by objectives so means ends الغايات والوسائل okay so it's an integrated network of goals in which the accomplishment of goals at one level serves as the means for achieving the goals or ends at the next level let's break it down so unlike the traditional approach where the people at the top just say that we want something done you just have to do it here they actually do something okay i can if i am a first line manager i cannot do my job i cannot you know achieve the part of the plan that i'm in charge of until the people above me have done their job first يعني لازم التوب مانجرز يسوون جزء من المهمه وينهون هذا الجزء المطلوب منهم عشان احنا عشان الناس اللي بعدهم والليفل اللي بعدهم يستطيعون انهم يحققون المطلوب منهم وهكذا اوكي okay? ما هو بس تنزل من فوق الى تحت لا انا في اسفل الهرم في اسفل القاعه ما اقدر اسوي اصلا العمل المطلوب مني الا اذا اللي فوقي انهى المطلوب منه يعني كل شيء مبني على الثاني هذا هو المينز اند شيء كل شيء وسيله للي بعده Let's take an example. So, they say that we want to improve the working environment. They say that this is our company's goal. We want to become or we want to have one of the best working environments in the entire country. طيب, كيف نحقق هذا الهدف? كيف يصير عندنا أفضل بيئة عمل في السعودية؟ لازم أول شيء الرؤساء الكبار الفايس بريزيدنت والسي اي اوز وغيرهم لازم هم ما يبداون از رول مودلز لازم هم ما يغيرون الانظمه واللوائح والقوانين حقت الشركه بعد ما هم يسوون هذا الشيء الان الميدل مانجرز يقدرون انهم هم يشتغلون وبعد ما الميدل مانجرز يخلصون الجزئيه المطلوبه منهم الان الفيرست لاين مانجرز يقدرون يشتغلون اوكي سو ذاتس ذا مينز اندز تشين Management by objectives is all about objectives, okay? Everything is evaluated and measured against those objectives. إحنا ما قلنا في شيء اسمه التقييم السنوي للموظفين, performance appraisals, performance evaluations. Um, so this is how your performance is going to be evaluated using this method. At the beginning of every year, في بداية السنة, يجلس معك السوبرفايزر يجلس معك مديرك المباشر ويحدد لك ويضع لك اهداف اوكي okay? your direct supervisor is going to sit with you and determine objectives for you that you must achieve and complete during this year خلال السنة هذه مطلوب منك تحقق الاهداف التالية 1 2 3 4 وفي نهاية السنة تقييمك السنوي يعتمد على مدى نجاحك في تحقيق هذه الاهداف how well did you achieve those goals this is how your performance is going to be evaluated and this is how management is done management by objectives we manage through objectives okay so how is management by objectives done how is it implemented uh, here you have a number of steps i'm not going of course to ask you to memorize all of those but you just have to take a look at them to understand how these things are done. 
So of course the organization's overall objectives and strategies are formulated first. Okay, so who formulates those? Definitely the top managers. لازم يكون عندنا mission, vision, value, and all of those things for the entire organization. And then major objectives are allocated among divisional and departmental units. تنزل هذه الأهداف العامة حق الشركة ككل تروح لكل قطاع أو لكل قسم أو لكل إدارة. Okay, then unit managers collaboratively set specific objectives for their units with their managers. People talk and discuss and meet as team members in order to determine those objectives. But then, لكل موظف في هذه الإدارة أنت حتساهم في تحقيق ماذا؟ Okay, what exactly your role when it comes to achieving and obtaining those objectives? And so on. Of course, we have to come up with action plans. We have to review these uh, objectives and those plans. Feedback is definitely very important. And finally, everything is measured against those plans and against the achievement uh, of those objectives. Okay? So, هذا اللي اسمه Management by Objectives. MBO. This is a very common style nowadays. A lot of companies are implementing this. Because they have found that it is very useful. It is very practical even. Okay? Ahdaf haqqaqa. This is very fair. And here are some characteristics of well-written goals. We have mentioned at the very beginning that goals must be written down. Hatta al-ahdaf al-shakhsiyya li inta tada'aha al-nafsa kabga akhsar wazan. أبغى أكتسب مهارة جديدة. أبغى أطور نفسي. You have to write down those goals. Okay. So, إيش اللي خلينا نحكم هذه الجولز مكتوبة بشكل جيد أو لا? How can we judge? Are those goals well written or not? Let's measure them against some of these. They have to be written in terms of outcomes rather than actions. So results. Okay. It's not just about how you're going to achieve them. But what is it? What is the outcome? What is it that you want to achieve, you know, by completing this task? They have to be measurable and quantifiable. You have to have a way of, you know, weighing them. You have to have a way of expressing them in terms of numbers. واحد يقول لك أبغى أخلي صحتي تصير أفضل. إيش تقصد صحتي تصير أفضل؟ هذا عام جدا. يقول لك والله أبغى أخفض مستوى الكوليسترول عندي بمقدار كذا. أبغى أخسر خمسة كيلو. أبغى أسوي وأفعل أوكي. Okay. In terms of numbers, they have to be quantifiable. They have to be clear as to a time frame. ما هو بس أبغى أخلي صحتي أفضل متى. أوكي. Okay. مع نهاية السنة الميلادية. خلال ثلاثة أشهر. أبغى أسوي كذا وكذا وكذا. لازم يكون عندك وقت. Time frame. They have to be challenging, but still they have to be attainable. It means they do not set goals that are very easy. Because they're not going to be motivating anymore. And do not set goals that are impossible. Because you're going to feel very bad about yourself when you fail. But set them in a way that make them challenging enough. But still, you know, achievable. So they must be written down as we mentioned. And they have to be shared and communicated to all necessary organizational members. Because, as we mentioned, it's about coordination of activities. أحياناً لازم يكون عندك دعم من إدارة الموارد البشرية. لازم يكون عندك دعم من إدارة المالية. لازم يكون عندك دعم من إدارة العلاقات العامة. كيف حيدعموك وكيف حيفهموا بالضبط إيش المطلوب منهم if you do not share this plan with them. Okay, so they must be communicated and shared to key people. All right, so how do we set goals in organizations? كيف نحط الأهداف في الشركات في المنظومات the organizations we have to review the mission the vision all of those bigger picture things okay we have to review and go back and read our organization's mission our organization's vision our value values our you know purpose and then we have to look at what available resources do we have إنت عشان تسوي أي حاجة في الشركة لازم يكون عندك Resources. You have to have resources. You have to have money. You have to have budgets. You have to have people. 
لازم يكون عندك فريق عمل يشتغل معك you have to have support you have to have a lot of things all of those things are resources موارد لازم تستعملها so look at this look into this what resources do I have وانت تبغى تسوي مشروع يحتاج منك 30 مليون والله الشركة تقول لك ما عندنا 30 مليون so you have to work with what you have then you have to determine the goals individually or with input from others you have to you know make sure that you involve relevant people this is why people sit together in meetings okay they discuss these things and then you have to write down the goals and communicate them to all who need to know as we mentioned you have to have support from different departments so you must involve them you must tell them about your plan about your goals and then the process doesn't end there you always go back and review when the daiman, even in the decision making process in chapter number two, if you remember, it, when, when, when you are done with the task, it doesn't mean that you are done. You have to go back and evaluate. You have to review. You have to assess. Did I do a good job or not? So that you can avoid some of the mistakes and improve on your strengths. All right. So across the levels of the organization, Remember, we had top management, middle management, and first line management. We go back to those strategic and operational plans. If you remember, we said strategic is more on a higher level, and it covers the entire organization. As you can look, as you can see over here, strategic is more uh, the task that is uh, 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 relevant to top executives. Kibar al-tanfidiyin fi al-sharika, al-mudara al-kubar, rais al-sharika, nawab al-rais. But operational planning is lower, is more a task for first line or first level managers, okay? And it covers a very specific function. It's about sales. It's about human resources. It's about, you know, the plant, masna, qayru, okay? So this is kind of a visual representation of what it looks like. Now, formal planning departments are nowadays created in organizations. It's a group of planning specialists with the sole responsibility of, you know, helping uh, to write down organizational plans. في الهيئة الملكية وفي كثير من جهات العمل سواء حكومية ولا خاصة صار في إدارة متخصصة للتخطيط. أعتقد ما في جامعة الآن في المملكة العربية السعودية إلا فيها قسم أو سموها وكالة أو عمادة التخطيط قسم التخطيط قسم الجودة في الهيئة الملكية مثلا في قطاع كامل أو قسم كامل اسمه قطاع أو قسم التخطيط الاستراتيجي أوكي okay. so formal planning departments that are nowadays created in organizations in order to help the entire company plan all the uh, activities and set the direction of the entire organization. So, we mentioned before that we have dynamic and we have stable environments. So, if you remember, stable environments are those in which there is minimal change. But dynamic environments are ones that are characterized with more frequent change. So we know that the business environment is always changing. It is dynamic. So we have to make sure that we respond to this kind of environment. So how do we plan? This is a challenge. So the first tip is that you have to develop plans that are yes specific, but they also must be flexible. لازم يكون الخطة فيها مرونة. Okay, because Things are always, always, always changing in the business environment. So you cannot, you know, stick 100% to your plan. Yes, that is the goal. Yes, try to stick to your plan as much as possible. Lacking, you have to adapt. You have to change your plan if needed. You must be flexible enough. You have to keep planning even when the environment is uncertain. Okay? حتى لو أنت في بيئة صعب جدا التنبؤ بها you have to have a plan because as we mentioned before without a plan you have no objectives if you have no objectives how can you know whether or not you're doing a good job how can you monitor and control 
And then finally, you have to allow lower organizational levels to set goals and develop plans. المشكلة اللي يقع فيها كثير من الجهات والشركات وغيرهم إنه they do not involve people at the lower level. يجيك رئيس الشركة ومدراء الكبار جدا يحطوا خطط على كيف نحسن بيئة العمل. وبالتالي يتخذوا قرارات ويصرفوا ميزانيات أحيانا ما تؤدي إلى أي نتائج إيجابية على الإطلاق. ليش؟ لأنهم ما تكلموا مع الموظفين الصغار. انزل تحت، انزل إلى الميدان، تكلم مع الناس، إيش تبغون نحسن؟ إيش تبغون نسوي؟ إيش اقتراحاتكم؟ أوكي؟ okay. So you have to at least give the lower level employees, those non-managerial employees, a voice in decision making. You have to listen to their suggestions. Okay? So this is, or these are some of the important guidelines and tips for how do you work in a dynamic and constantly changing business environment. So there's something that is called environmental scanning. So a scan of the environment, a scan of the business environment in which your organization operates. So this is when you screen information to detect emerging trends. So this is when you examine what is going on in the market. This is when you examine what are my competitors doing? What are my customers doing? Okay, so this is called environmental scanning. You examine, you look into, you search for trends. إيش الموضة الحين؟ إيش اللي طالع الحين في عالم البزنس؟ إيش اللي طالع الحين في عالم الجوالات؟ إيش اللي طالع الحين في عالم الصناعة؟ Okay, you have to understand these things. You have to pick up on those things. And sometimes you can use your competitors as a good tool. So instead of, okay, instead of just reacting to what your competitors are doing, you are trying to anticipate and expect what they are doing before they even do it. مثلا, ليش الملاكمين ولاعبين كرة القدم مثلا والرياضيين بشكل عام لما يكون عندهم منافسة حي هذا الملاكم حيباري ملاكم آخر وهذا فريق كرة القدم هذا راح يباري فريق كرة قدم آخر يبدأون يجمعون أشرطة المباريات حقتهم خلال الست شهور الماضية ويدرس حركات الفريق هذا تمام يدرس حركات الخصم تمام يحاول إيش يتنبأ ويتوقع هذا الخصم إيش راح يسوي قبل لا يسوي بدل ما أنا فقط respond I only just react no I'm taking proactive measures and I will try what will Okay, so this concept is called competitor intelligence. When you gather information about your competitors in order to allow you, uh, you know, allow you to anticipate, expect, and guess what are they going to do before they do it. And since we are talking about the modern business environment, nowadays we have so many tools that help managers when it comes to decision making. Uh, of course, you know, digital tools are very common and very prevalent nowadays. So things like business intelligence. We have entire courses, entire degrees even in the uh, uh, field of business intelligence. So the core idea of business intelligence is data. Bayanat. Business intelligence يتعلق بالبيانات. This is why they say data is power. This is why they say data is everything. You collect data, as much good data as possible, and this is how you make good decisions. Okay? You collect data as much as you can. Uh, you use digital tools, so technologies, systems, softwares, mobile applications, in order to collect to visualize, to understand, and even analyze this data. مثلا شركة جوجل شركة جوجل كيف تطلع فلوس؟ تجمع بيانات وتبيع هذه البيانات على الشركات الأخرى. من خلال استخدامك لجوجل كروم، من خلال استعمالك لجوالك، من خلال استعمالك لتطبيقات جوجل، يجمعون بيانات عنك، أوكي؟ أنت متى تصحى؟ متى تنام؟ متى تكون أكثر شيء نشيط؟ إيش المواقع اللي زرتها خلال الفترة الماضية؟ إيش الأشياء اللي تشتريها؟ هذه كلها تجمع البيانات عن طريق جوالك وأنت ما تحس عن طريق استخدامك للإنترنت عن طريق استعمالك للابتوبك لجوالك لغيره هذه البيانات تعطيها جوجل لشركات الإعلانات تعطيها جوجل لشركات الجوالات تعطيها جوجل لكل الشركات اللي تتعامل معها 
in order for those companies to come up with strategies on how exactly are they going to sell their product to you. Okay? This is business intelligence. So, uh, three common digital tools are data visualization tools. Data visualization. So, الأرقام صعب إنك أنت تشوفها. الأرقام صعب إنه من كذا أرقام مكتوبة كذا جداول طويلة جدا وقوائم كبيرة متعبة للنظر وأصلا ما تفهم منها شيء. لكن لما تحطها في فيجر تحطها في جراف تحطها في رسم بياني تحطها في إنفوغرافيك تصير مور يوزر فريندلي and now you can actually understand something of them so these are called data data visualization tools how data are uh, uh, visualized how data are you know organized in a way that are user friendly using graphs colors charts and so on then of course we have cloud computing cloud computing using the cloud okay so how data is stored on the internet in the cloud rather than a hard drive. زمان كنت لما تخزن أي ملف لازم يروح physically في the hard disk أو في the hard drive حق اللابتوب حقك أو حق جهازك. الآن تقدر تخزن على Dropbox على على Google Drive على غيره. Okay. So these are new tools now that help you when it comes to data. وأخيرا the IOT, the Internet of Things. So they allow everyday things to generate and store and share data across the Internet. زي إيش مثلاً؟ تستغرب مثلاً لما تشوف شركة LG سوت لك ثلاجة. الثلاجة هذه متصلة بالإنترنت وتقدر ترسل بيانات للشركة أو للمصنع تعطيهم فكرة جديدة عنك أو تعطيهم فكرة جديدة عن المنتج هذا. Okay. هذه الثلاجة تقول لهم والله هذا الشخص اشترى حليب ويشتري دائما حليب يوم الأحد الحليب عنده ينتهي تاريخه قبل لا يخلص آه وهكذا الآن الشركات هذه صارت تعرف معلومات زيادة عنك فتعرف تسوق لك أشياء جديدة أوكي؟ المكيفات الآن تتصل بالإنترنت الطابعات صارت تتصل بالإنترنت كل الأجهزة الكهربائية ممكن الآن أن هي تتصل بالإنترنت وأن هي ترسل بيانات للمصنع اللي هي جات منه أو للشركة أو غيره. Why is this happening? They are trying to collect data about you. And the more data they have about you, your, uh, you and you are a consumer, you are a buyer, you are a customer, the more they know about you and the more they, you know, the better they can design their, you know, uh, strategies to sell you more products. So this concludes our chapter. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.